Hello and welcome back to worldpokertour.com. My good friend Michel Avagassis told me a story Hello. this week that I felt like if I wouldn't share it with you guys at home, I would be making a mistake. Michel, you told me that you played backgammon with Frank Sinatra, the Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Please tell me what was the setting and how did you come to that point? Well, it was like back, it was one of my best memories ever, you know. I've met all kind of people as a bridge player, as a poker player, as a journalist, but this this encounter was so special, you know. It was like uh, 1979, I was in Biarritz for a bridge tournament, staying in this wonderful Hotel du Palais, where the waves are breaking just under your window, and it's, it, it's magic. And then I was just here by myself, wandering around, and uh, I wanted to, to have a drink at the bar, so I went down at the end of the afternoon, and the bar was like closed with curtains, and there was these two bouncers, big guys, in front of the door, so I, I, I couldn't get in, so they said, no, no, it's close to the public, we are, it's private, to, private today, and I say, why, I am a guest in the hotel, I can, so we made some noise, and at some point I see the curtain going like this, like in a theater, and I saw this guy appear, one of the greatest star in the world, Frank Sinatra, so I couldn't believe it. So I, I was shocked, my head popped out, and uh, he said, well, what, what's this all about? Go away. So, okay, I said, no, I'm not talking to you, and these guys, I don't need them. Come on and have a drink. So Frank Sinatra asked me wow, to have a drink wow. <laughs> with him, so it was unbelievable. So he say, um, uh, what's your name? I say, uh, I mumble something. I say, my, my God, Mr. Sinatra, I'm very uh, flat or not. Uh, well, just call me Frank. Just call me Frank. Frank Sinatra, okay. So what are you here for? I say, um, I'm playing a, a bridge tournament. It is my part of my... You know, I travel around, I always say, how oh, fascinating, I'd love to do that. I'm a gambler, you know, but I don't play well, I've never tried. Would you teach me? So, well, it's, it's a little bit, a bit complicated, maybe. So, but let's have a drink. So he said, like this, American way, <laughs> to the barman, so to, to, to have a couple of whiskeys. And uh, he said, but we should do something, play. It, was, it looked like it was a little uh, squiffy. He probably had a couple of drinks before. So that's why he was enjoying it and talking to me, maybe. He looked, uh, by the way, he looked uh, rather lonely and, and sad, maybe. And then he said, well, let's, do, let's play something, let's play poker. So I say, I'm afraid I don't play poker. I've never played poker in my life at, at that point. 1979, you had yeah. not discovered the so game yet. I curse myself not to know how to play poker with Frank Sinatra. So they say, well, I can't play. Do you play some? Of course you play some other games. So I say, I, say, I play Gin Rami or Backgammon. Or, oh yes, let's play Backgammon. So he asked for a, for a board Backgammon and we played. We played a couple of games of, bag, of Backgammon together and I've never forgotten this, this moment in my life. And after that it became uh, I, I didn't know much about him at that time, but after that, I've seen all the possible movies, listened to his record, bought and read all all the books about him, and I was I'm I'm fascinated by his life. You know, he was uh, such a, a strange man. He was he was very peculiar because on one way he has very dark side. He was linked with the mafia. Everybody knows that, and all the journalists know it. And he was very quick tempered, and he he was fighting with journalists and he. Punching, punching the nose some people for for talking about his links with the mafia, but uh, on the other hand, he was uh, uh, he, he was a very generous man. He, he made a lot for the civil rights in America. He fought for the civil rights. Thanks to him, uh, the first black man could enter a casino in Las Vegas. You know, uh, probably it was not Sammy Davis Jr., but his butler, George Jacobs. He has a black butler. He was very f close to his butler, and uh, and uh, he was very generous. He gave away tons of money to charity or to people, his friend in the need, and always 
anonymously. You know, he didn't want to appear like uh, to do it like for for the show or for his image. So he, he, he was a, and very passionate. He has so he has all the possible women in the world. You know, I'm afraid. I mean, this is a beautiful moment in time and a beautiful memory. And I'm really, really happy you told me this story. And now I'm just off dreaming and I'm probably going to watch <laughs> the, uh, the old original Ocean's Eleven movie uh, later today. Uh, you guys stay tuned to worldpokertour.com for more coverage. Thank you, Remco.